Okay, well, thank everybody. My name is Al Prado. I am the regional referee, uh, director of instruction for Marietta, 1463. I'm also on the section one staff as the section one director of referee assessment, formerly being the section run of, of referee instruction. So that transition took, took, took about a week ago or so. Um, and apologies in advance if you do, uh, I've had a very excited six-year-old grandson in the background. So um, yeah, that's, that's a fun story. I didn't have any kids in program until this year. Now I've got a six-year-old grandson playing six U. So it's great. I've been refing since 2004. I'm a national referee and uh, can do as many games as I possibly can because I just love being out on the pitch. So, um, anyways, th thanks again for joining. Thanks for giving me the time on a Thursday on a, on a Thursday evening. Um, it's, it's a fairly long presentation, but I'll try to go as quickly as I can. If you again, if you have any questions, put it put it in the chat, and if we have to, we'll talk about. It. Otherwise, Mara and or Steve will take care of them via the chat. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is the laws of the game update. Because every year there's some changes. We're near the end of this year's changes. So if, if, if you refereed last fall, then probably the same thing, but just giving updates. And I know IFAB had their meeting this week, and there's some rumblings about the changes coming up later on. So we don't know those yet officially, but when we do, we'll publish something as well, probably likely in, in the fall before we start off. We'll talk about, you know, the series of the game. We'll talk about pregame, direct free kicks, indirect free kicks, offside, drop ball, and post game. So and we only have another hour, so let's just go quickly here. So um, in the past, if the goal was scored in the 12, in the more than, more than the, the, the number of players on the field, for example, if there were eight players in a 10U match or 12 or uh, 10 in a 2-12 match or, or 12 in the 14 and the 14 above match, the goal was not, uh, would not count. Uh, this last year, they said that the player, if the 12th player was not involved, did not interfere with play, the goal would, the goal, were, the, goal the goal would count. So um, a little bit of common sense there, and that didn't happen very often in, in what we did. Um, players' equipment. Um, the big thing here is no earrings, right? And not even if they uh, if they if they cover up with band aids. There's you know there's no earrings at all, no jewelry at all. Primary, primarily earrings and primarily girls, but uh, happens to boys as well. Uh, so no jewelry at all. If you can see it, if they want to play, they got to remove it. Um, and we'll talk about a couple of things here coming up as well. Um, the latest thing coming up is uh, welded uh, jewelry. That's been a trend in different parts of the country, different parts of the world. Um, if it's welded, they, again, they cannot play no jewelry. So, as, as coaches pass it on to your uh, to your to your uh, to your players. So, haven't seen a lot of it myself, but I, I know it's been a problem. So, no jewelry, including welded jewelry. Okay. Um, they've changed this year for. Um, for hair beads, and this is the change that high school started. So there's some pictures here that's you know because hair beads used to be a no-no for safety reasons. Now they've they, they've amended that, and so now you can have actually have hair beads if they're kept close to the head, right? And to, to, so that way this, this doesn't pose a risk if they sw if they swing around into the um, to to a teammate or an opponent. So see the pictures here. So A not allowed, C not allowed, B and D are allowed because they're close to the head. Um, Tough to enforce, but uh, you know, at least we have clear guidance from the high school folks, also as long for uh, for AYSO. Okay, additional hair adornment um, not allowed with the, with the loose ones like that. Allowed if they're tucked in and or uh, you know in, in a bun. Right, common sense things. Hair, hair clips such as, such as this not allowed because they come off and you know it is a safety thing it could come off it could if the ball hits it ball hits the player there it could injure the player or if it comes off it could injure somebody else on the field so um again it's all we're not we're not uh, anti-fashion we are we are, are pro-safety okay hair hair charms very pretty but no go for soccer Okay, we allow medical alert bracelets as long as they're taped and can't go under somebody's fingers. And the same thing for um, for, for for religious for religious items. So uh, it's the referee's decision to judge um, whether it's permissible or not. So. Real quick question for you, Al. Yeah. Um, medical, um, well, not medical bracelets. So say, for example, necklaces. I know there's medical necklaces as well. Yes. Is that... And not to necessarily put you on the spot or anything, but is that allowed or not? Do you know? Yes. If, if, if medical religious don't go anywhere near that, right? You can ask them to, um, you know, 
if it's if it's under the shirt, it's easier to stay tucked if it's under the shirt. Um, so yeah, that's a lot. Anything you know, medical really just don't go there. Gotcha. Free advice. Yes. Thank you. Sure. And by the okay. way, I'm, I'm, I apologize again, Al. Do you want to maybe go ahead and wait till a section is done, and then we'll ask you some of the questions? Sure, that'll, that'll work. Okay, that works. Yeah. I mean, whenever you're ready, let me let us. Okay, know. we are done with the uh, players' equipment and jewelry. Any questions there? Okay, so we had one already. Yeah, there were a couple. Um, are hair bows on elastics okay? Yes. Oh, and I'm sorry, Steve. Look at that. Yeah, it's been answered already. You Steve actually answered. I, yeah. I failed. Sorry, guys. So welcome back, John. So, um, okay. Any, any, any of the questions on, um, on jewelry? I'll take that as a no, uh, duration of the match. We now allow time to, uh, we, we do, um, we do allow time funny because laws of the game say allow time for that. When you play games back to back to back to back, we don't allow time, but just understand what the laws say is we now add time for, for, uh, for goal celebration. When they take their 15, 20 seconds to do their, their dive on the corner flag there, they add time for that as well, um, and along with uh, interference to to up an out, by an outside agent. If you stop the match because you know six year old grandson hops on the field, allow time for that. Not that it'd be my six year old grandson, but uh, somebody else's. Any questions on that? Good, good, good. Am I going too fast or at a pretty good pace? Uh, I'm sorry. Can I ask? Uh, this is John. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir, John. All uh, right. Sorry. Um... What about uh, going back to jewelry, earrings, silicone earrings for girls that had pierced ears that just got their ears pierced? This came up last year. Is that okay? Silicone means it's, it's a rubbery material. Yes. Technically, the answer is no because it's still jewelry and it's, there's, there's, there's still risk of, of, of potentially injuring somebody. Um, it's good just not to have it. The question that I have, frankly, which I don't have an answer to, is a lot. You know, and I haven't seen a lot of it, but some, 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 some uh, players have the plugs, and without the plug, is actually the hole in the ear is actually more is you know probably more dangerous. But that one there, um, something to think about. But, but no, no plugs, John. No, uh, no silicone. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Determine the outcome of the match. This is when I almost left AYSO and soccer altogether because we lost the battle. Um, it is now official. You can, at the end of a match, you can say it goes into penalty kicks or shootouts. <laughs> Sorry, Al. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I still call it kicks for the mark, but uh, I'm in the wrong. Now. Anyway, so that we did make we, an official change. So now it's penalty kicks or penalty shootout. And then... Um, the one thing that is new, though, um, is if you, if you if you're issued a, if a player or, or coach is issued an, a caution during the match, it resets for the for the uh, the taking of the kicks. So if you have one caution going into the kick and you get another caution during the pro the kick process, you you, you goes back to one. So not much of a problem for us in fourteen sixty three because I don't think we give a lot of car you know not, you know we, we behave properly, but other 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 divisions other uh, you know other companies have done that. So, okay, we, this, this is not new. Um, just remember for caution, we're dealing with youth players and discipline accordingly. A lot of times, you know, a, a, a caution, meaning, um, meaning a yellow card, is really meant to change behavior. And if you could do that by, you know, by using your voice or whistle, mission accomplished without the card. So that's more of a refereeing style, but in terms of, you know, we talk about cards, you know, do what we can to manage it with, without a card. And oftentimes you can talk to the players, use your whistle, and they'll get the message that you, something happened, you didn't like it. Okay. This one here is, is an interesting one um, for outside. Deliberate play is when a player has control of the ball, the possibility of passing the ball, the teammate getting possession of the ball, or clearing the ball. So if, if you think they could have played the ball, consider that possession. And it, it negates the offside. I'll let that sit for a second. Um, you know, one thing which, which would be great, Al, and, and maybe the referee squad, maybe we, what we can do is take notes as far as uh, if we can find some video clips of some of those instances, I bet that would be huge for these guys, right? Yeah. So I'll take a note, note of that on the side. Okay. We could probably send them some videos in the future. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
And a little more explanation here. So basically, because the, the law the, the law is last touched or played by a teammate, right? So last touched or played by a teammate. And, the, and when they play, they, mean, they really mean control of the ball. If the defensive team controls the ball and now, in your opinion, the referee had a chance to control the ball and did not, then that player is a longer offside. So probably not going to happen much in 10U. Uh, a little more in 12, you know, happens quite, you know, but this, this is more impacting the older kids who actually have the skill level and talent to, to, to play the ball. But in 10 you, if you're doing a regional 10 you match, I would, you know, you just be aware that this is the law, but you know, offside is offside. Yep. Everybody okay with that? Any questions on that one? Cause I'm leaving, I'm leaving law 11 and this is, you know, kind of, kind of a, a tricky one. Yeah, can you pause just for a second? I'm trying to read this myself. Okay. <laughs> just make sure I understand the finer points of it. Sorry. Of course, Kyle. No, no need to apologize. And, We're here and, for you. And by the way, as, as a heads up, we'll share this all, all this stuff with you guys afterwards as well, including the video. We're actually recording yeah. the video, everybody. So heads up on that. Yeah. Sorry, I had a question real quick. Yes, Alexis. Um, there is there's no offsides when it, when it's a throw in, right? Correct. No offside on on any of the restarts to put the ball back in play. A throw in, a corner kick, or a goal kick. Got it. All good, Kai. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Did you call Elvin Wood? Ooh, there's a <laughs> who gets that reference? <laughs> Okay, foul, fouls in, in misconduct. Actually, she changed to the offensive misconduct. Um, so this one here is, is, is for misconduct, and again, probably probably not not probably not um, prevalent in ten and twelve. But it, <clears throat> if a player stops a promising attack, <coughs> Julie, that um, that is not a cautionable offense. So if in the promising attack, again, in the opinion of the referee, doesn't have to be an obvious goal score opportunity. It's a promising attack. So if, 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 you know, if, 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 if the ball gets cleared and there's like three attackers and two defenders, they've got the numbers, you know, anything that would foul that, we call that a tactical foul back in the day, a professional foul, that is not a cautionable offense. So, again, probably not in 10s and 12s, more so in 14s. Okay, same thing here. Good, good, good. So again, probably not happening in much many of our games, but if something happens from the technical area and we can't tell who it is, the senior the senior coach or the head coach, not the oldest coach, but the head coach will get the will get the card. So this guy's give more explanation here. The penalty kick. That's a good one. So uh, this one applies to every division, of course. The keeper may not must not behave in a way that fairly distracts the kicker, delaying the, the delay the delaying the kick the kick or the touch or you know or touch the crossbar or goals or nets. Now, now in this instance, Al, just to kind of clarify a little bit, yeah, the goalkeeper can kind of move. It's not a situation where we're saying the goalkeeper can't move at all, right? I Correct. Mean, okay. Okay. They can, they, can, they, can, they can jump up and down, do, the, do their hands. I mean, they, you know, that's, that's all sort of part of the game, but they can't, um, you know, a lot of times uh, what, what some keepers do on the penalty kick, they will walk up and they're trying to intimidate the, the, try to intimidate the keeper or the kicker, move back. Uh, they can't run back and forth to distract. I mean, reasonableness here, right? At this point, reasonableness. Um, they can't be yelling, hey, you, they can't, you know, can't be you know, distracting too much. But or, or even like banging on the bars, like jumping. Right, exactly, the exactly, okay. exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, they can move from side to side, but not be able to distract the kicker, so. Right. Gotcha. Okay. This covers uh, the, the, the updates of the laws of the game. Any questions? Moving on to referee stuff. Okay. Anybody see the screen? Looks this phone. So, you know, basically pregame, arrive early, 20, 30 minutes. Because um, it gives you time, especially if you're, if you're you know, um, uh, Torrey Pines, you got to find parking, you got to walk, you know, 
allow plenty of time for that, right? So that way that also gets in the, uh, you get in the right mindset besides just being, you know, being happy just parked your car, right? Allow plenty of time, um, give you a chance to check the fields. Because even the last game of the day, you know, things happen. There might be some, you know, some, some trash or something, you know, whatever can you know, the field or the goals got moved for some reason. So check the field. Um, introduce yourself to the coaches. I mean, at, at this point, you know, being that we probably, we probably know a lot of folks in the region, but still a good chance to set, set up that coach referee relationship, right? Um, me personally, the referee, I don't like to be called by name, nor do I call a coach I know by name. To me, it's always a coach. We're, we're talking about a role. Not a, not it makes it less personal, but introduce yourself to the coaches again. Establish that relationship. Um, you know, sort of. You know, we're all here for the kids, and um, it, it, it only builds from there. Um, conduct a, a, a safety a player safety check. Shin guard should be under the socks, um, especially the younger kid. For some reason, they put the, and the socks are so big. They put the sock on, shin guard on, and fold the socks over. It really should be under. It really should be under the sock against the skin. Um, I think it holds better that way. Um, no jewelry, like we talked about, no jewelry at all, no exceptions. Uh, they cannot be taped. Um, so that is what it is. Um, a, a pre a pre a brief pregame with the referee team, even if it's 30 seconds for a minute, just kind of talk about how to work as a team, things you want to focus on, how to communicate with you, what to do in certain situations. Uh, standard signals, which by the way are in the law book. And if you have any non-standard signals, um, you know, a lot of the more experienced referees will do a, a like a hand in on the field if the ball's still in play. That way we know you're looking at it and the ball's still in play. Um, discuss those kind of things, what to do on a penalty kick, where to stand, how to signal encroachments. Um, you know, referee team, the, the, the more the better we act as a team, the better the game will go. Right. Try to be the referee and referee team that you'd like to see when when your kids are playing. Right. That, 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 that's, you know, at that level, you know, try to be that team. Um, which includes going back a little bit to the basic, which includes, um, you know, uniform, shirt tucked in, socks pulled up, you know, look the part. You have a question, I mean? Well, I was just going to mention, you know, for anybody out there who might be a brand, brand new referee, uh, as far as the pregame is concerned. So, so keep in mind, if you're an assistant referee, you should be meeting with your referee and the referee will be leading the way as far as the pregame goes. But if you're out there and you want to be a referee, I know Morrow, Morrow, we have these little tiny um, little guides, these little, you know, I shouldn't say pieces of paper, but we, we can provide you guys these little pamphlets that will actually give you some feedback on what you should be talking about, what you should be discussing, and they're really, really handy. So whenever you're out there, when you get your uniform, feel free to ask Morrow for one of those and we'll, we'll make sure to get you. That's it for if me. You, if you don't get in touch with me before your game starts, they'll be at the referee tent. Just pick one up and you can put it in your pocket. Uh, so you can go to the pre pre game with your referees and give you a quick uh, uh, brief discussion as far as the game management. Yeah, and one 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 great thing about Region fourteen sixty three is is the referee support. Uh, I, I've I've been in several regions in my IUSO career. This one by far is you know gives more support and you know if you, if you need uniforms, if you need socks, and you know the, you know you you are taken care of and feel you know very much a part of the. Um, of the referee family. Um, anyway, moving on. So conduct a coin toss. Uh, generally speaking, the visiting team calls the coin toss and heads or tails or whatever you want to do. And the winner chooses possession, kickoff, or direction. So pretty easy there. Okay. In terms of, um, and, I will, and I will share, do you guys like what I said this morning if you saw it, the sheet, the sheet with acronyms? I will share that also when we get to it. Um, there are 10 direct free kick fouls, and they're called direct free kick fouls because that's what the restart is, right? If, they, if, any, of, if any of these occur and you call it, it's a direct free kick. If it's, if it's you know, let's say, for example, handball offense, if, you know, if the guy wasn't that bad at handball, I'll make it indirect. No, if it's not that bad, don't call it. But if you're going to call any of these 10, it is, uh, it is a direct free kick foul. And the first three, I call the assault and battery fouls because it's the foul and or the attempt. Right. So if you see something, that if they attempt to kick an opponent, or attempt to strike an opponent or trip an opponent, and they, even if they fail, just the attempt, you can call the foul. Um, the next four, um, the first seven are really um, they're conditional, meaning 
Um, there's, there's a degree to how they happen, but they but they involve contact. That's why the direct free kick fouls, right? So if they charge an opponent, and a fair charge is shoulder to shoulder, a staccato, you know, bump, bump, bump. As long as they're both playing the shoulder, we're all good. If they jump at an opponent, uh, which you see occasionally, that that's a foul. It's not good. Whether they make contact or not, they jump at an opponent, that, that's a foul. Uh, we all know pushing, of course. And tackles, um, a, an unfair tackle. You can tackle from behind. You can tackle from the side, but not if it, if you know, not if it puts the other player in danger, or, or, or you know. And um, and on this one here, getting the ball first does not make it not a foul. You can get the ball first, and then if you make contact that you, in, in your opinion, you think is unfair, you call the foul, despite the fact that they got ball. The other three are holds an opponent. We know that one. Um, handball offense or impedes with contact. That's that's sort of a rare one because it goes with holding. And the reason, um, go back, the reason the first seven are the conditional fouls, because if they just happen as part of a match, it's a foul, not a big deal. If it happens and you think it's, it's, it's if you happen and you think it's reckless, which sort of, they, they're, not, they're, not, they're not showing care for the, for the opponent's safety, that would then be a yellow card. Again, not in 10U, very rare in 12U, upper, you know, higher level games, yes. And if they do something with excessive force, that, you know, that's a key word for, um, you know, for, for, for a send off. So just a regular foul, which has happened most of the time, it's just, you know, just, just, a, just a whistle of the referee kick. But if you think, you know, careless, reckless, you know, in excessive force. So understand why we call those the conditional fouls, because there's conditions upon how we deal with it. The last three, if they happen, they happen. You know, there's new can't hold an opponent, you know, recklessly. Um, okay. Any questions on those? Okay. Yes, Joe B. Quick question. I, um, I, I talked to multiple refs about the uh, handball, you know, situation. And um, AYSO organization, I said tomorrow too, and I talked to the refs. Basically, AYSO stated that all players may protect themselves from being hit by the ball by using their hand or hands. This is self-defense is not a defense. However, deliberate use of the hands to control the ball or otherwise alter this path is an offense. Referees are charged for determining whether or not the contact of the ball or hand was to control the ball or for self-protection. So either for advantage or for self-protection. So I know it's the ref's game when they're refing the center field and you, you need to, you, you, I tell all the kids that, you know, it's a judgment call, they have to decide. But I'm just wondering how, it seemed like we, the handball seemed like it was pretty cut and dry when you put it in the fouls of direct kick. Always, you know, in that case, because we tell the kids not to reach out to the ball, not make yourself bigger, not, and they, if they can move, great. If they can't, then they're, they're allowed to put their hands to their face and protect their face, especially when that box is kind of small and some of these kids can kick pretty hard. These kids are not moving very well and they can't head the ball at this point. And their heads are not in a swivel until they start getting like a 12 year and above. So how do we, how is the ref supposed to be handling that case? Good question. The, the rule of thumb that a lot of referees go by, and it's just a general rule is, did the ball play the hand or the hand play the ball? Right, and if you think if you think the ball play the hand, you know, and that means the hand, the arms are in natural position. Even if even if the player is running, you're still in natural position to running. Right, it's in natural position. Um, protecting yourselves, air in the side of caution, especially in the younger divisions. Um, you know, if they're moving away from the ball, if you think it's too close, they can't. They can't. They couldn't. They could not have got out of the way. By all means, you know that. You know, do not call the handball. Um, what I what I what I personally do, and I think other people do as well, is something like that. I will say out loud, not deliberate, protecting themselves. You know, that way everybody knows you saw it, but you're not going to call it. Okay. I, I think that helps. But in terms of protectors, and especially as we, as, you know, the younger kids, you know, we really, really err on this, you know, on the side of not handball because you know, they're, they don't know what they're doing. Right. Okay. Anecdotally, if you did a, if you did a, a 10U match and didn't call any handball at all. You would be right more often. You'd be wrong. Meaning, most of it is probably not. It's probably not deliberate. They're probably just you know clumsy nine-year-olds. You know who are learning how to coordinate their bodies. Um, okay. Did I answer your so question, Joe? Yeah. So basically, okay. if they're, they're trying to protect themselves for not playing the ball. Then it's just you try to tell your kids to keep their hands down, but if they have to protect their face, and yeah, they're at absolutely. that age, it's it's it should be okay for the kids while they're still learning. You're saying so. correct. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, of course. Good question. Good question. Good question. Okay. The more the more the most common direct free kick fouls you'll see in 10U is of course is pushing, holding, handball, or tripping. Those are the most common ones. And again, this, these are nine-year-olds playing the ball. They're still being coordinated. You know, there are a lot of things here. And you know, and nothing, <clears throat> it is very, very, very rare to have something you need to be more, more deliberate and or malicious. Okay. Any question on direct free kick fouls? <coughs> Okay, indirect free kick. This is a little bit, little bit more, a um, little, little more text to the slide. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go a little, I'll go a little slower on it. But basically, there are four, especially for the keeper. Okay, takes more than six seconds controlling the ball. Um, very, very rare, especially in ten U, where the keepers, you know, where the keepers don't. Um, no, you know, they they don't know what they're doing, and they're getting direction from, you know all 37 coaches on the sideline, right? I, I will share a funny little story from a friend of mine um, who referees in a, in a different area. He does, he's also a national, but he likes to do 10 new matches to sort of mentor the kids. And a little, a little line, early in the, early in, in, the, in, the, in the season, a little nine-year-old boy picks up the ball and everybody's yelling, you know, give it to Jeremy, give it to Jeremy, give it to Jeremy, right? And the kid's running around holding the ball, you know, and now it's been like 10, 12 seconds. The kid's still holding the ball, you know, and so my friend Scott stopped the match and he was really loud, you know, teaching moment, teaching moment, because they're not going to penalize the kid. And he goes, hey, what's up? He goes, starts crying, goes, I don't know who Jeremy is. <laughs> So he gave, you know, so the point is nine-year-olds, you know, give them some time. You know, you can, you can talk to them and put the ball in play. You can do a lot of things, you know, for, 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 for a nine-year-old. Um, yes, Krista. Okay, sorry, I'm driving. Okay, so wait, real quick. Can we just go back to the handball real quick? Yes. Just because I feel like I get this a lot in games. Let's say you're an attacker, okay, and you're in the area, okay? Ball goes up, you protect the face, then after it hits your hand, it goes right to you know, your teammate, and now they have an off, like, now they got an advantage because of that handball, even though they were protecting the face. You kind of cut out so, are, you, are you driving now because you're putting your hands up? I'd rather you keep your hands on the steering wheel if you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Krista. Yeah. I'm going to try to. I mean, we're going like five miles an hour, okay. but like in that instance, because because they got an advantage, right? Like, if if they're the the like word you, advantage is is not part of the laws of the game for this one. If in your opinion they were protecting themselves, you can't call a hand because it's not a handball. Okay. okay. If in your opinion they're legitimately protecting themselves, if they, if, they, if they take a shot that's two yards away from the goals of their head, you know. Again, it's especially especially in the um, especially in the in younger divisions, the one thing that they cannot do, they cannot do is if the if, if if the same situation where the kid puts his hand to protect himself, the ball falls to his feet and he scores directly a goal, directly scores a goal from that. There's no goal, right? Even though it's not a handball, there's right. no goal. But aside from that, right. if, if in your opinion. These, the player legitimately protecting themselves, not trying to play the ball or gain an advantage or do anything like that or troop the system, no, no, no foul, regardless of what happens afterwards. Got it. And if a coach okay, complains, you. you can either ignore it or say, coach, he was protecting himself. You know, don't, you know, this, this is what okay. I called. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Of course. Good question. Um, so six seconds. Um, touches the ball again after they've released it. So keeper gets the ball, controls it, puts it on the ground, right, to, to, to the, for the, the build-out line, and then picks it up again. That's an infraction. Um, they're allowed to. They're allowed to. Um, I say dribble the ball. They're, they're allowed to bounce the ball, right? Dribble, dribble is, is in basketball. They're allowed to do that, and we still call that possession. But if they put it on the ground, control it, then they can't pick it up again. Um, touch the ball with their hands because they can kick it after it's been deliberately kicked to them by a teammate. It's sort of rare, but it does happen. Um, deliberate kick by a teammate and they pick it up. That's, um, and again, you have a lot of leeway as a referee with what you think is a deliberate kick. If you don't think it's a deliberate kick, then it's, it's, not, it's not an offense, okay? Likely not gonna happen in 10 you, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit more so in 12 and in 14, in 14 and above. Um, Yes, Joe. 
so quick. What about, um, I know once the goalie lets go of the ball and hits the ground, then they have to kick it. They can't pick it up, right? Correct. Um, but uh, sometimes you see these, these kids, they'll try to, they'll do a drop kick because they technically, once it hits the ground, they have to kick it, right? They can't, right. They can't pick it up again. Correct. How is it left to you instruct the player to understand that um, to either put it on the ground and kick it or, or, you know, or release the ball with their hand but not drop kick it? And the, and the drop kicking you're referring to is sort of the skirt around the no punting rule, correct? Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. If that's so, if that's the case, I would um, I, I I would stop the match and warn the and warn the, the, the keeper and the coach and and, and, and let and let them redo it. Again, deep, 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 you know, Morrow, Steve, or Jaime, you know, I mean, early in the season, I think there's moments of teaching moments that you can actually do that so everybody learns. Late okay. in the season or a straight select, you know, if the should know better, then, then you can call it back and, you, can, you know, give, a, give an indirect free kick for that. Or okay, thank you. Oh, okay, thank Morrow, you. Morrow, you might be muted. Just heads up. Usually on the spring, you have Al, you're right. On the spring, we try to, uh, the first couple of games, maybe the first three games, Yeah. we use a lot of teaching moments. Yeah. Because spring is, is, a, is, is, is a coaching, is a teaching season. So after that, we kind of start in, in, enforcing the, the, the okay. rules. But yeah, the first couple of games, yeah, it's a teaching moment. As a referee, we stop with, uh, we give him a little uh, instruction and try not to, uh, be part, uh, to delay the game too much. But yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Answer your question, Joe. Thank you. Okay. And the last one is touching the ball with your hands. Same thing as the liver kick after throwing by a teammate. So the keeper could always kick the ball. No matter what, what time it would, no matter what, what, what you know, no matter what happens in the game, even if that's not the penalty area, they could always kick the ball. They can't always handle it. So understand that. Um, other indirect free kicks are playing in a dangerous manner. Um, generally called for a high kick, but the, 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 the height of the kick is not the issue. It's, you know, are they, are they endangering themselves or another player? Another common one for, especially for the young kids, is playing the ball on the ground. You can play the ball on the ground. You can do snow angels, whatever you want to do, right? As long as you're not in danger, in that case, is yourself. So as long as the player is not endangering themselves, they can, they can play on the ground. Just being on the ground itself is not a violation. It's just putting yourself in a, in a dangerous situation. Then, you, then you're because at that point you're protecting them. Um, impedes the progress of an opponent without contact. Um, not going to happen in tens and twelves, and that's you know, and in, 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 you know, as long as they're within plain distance, which for ten is probably three or four feet. You know, they get longer as they get more. You know, more distance as you get older, more talented. Um, you know, it, 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 let's say the ball is going back to the keeper, and, and the defender tries to impede the progress of an opponent by running in front of them, or, or, or you know, prevent them from going forward. Those are examples of you know, impeding the progress. Um, the other one is guilty of dissent, offensive or abusive language, and reactions for verbal offense. Those are also cautionable offenses, meaning either a card and or a send off, but, this, but the, the, the restart for that is an indirect free kick. So if you don't call a handball and somebody, you know, somebody says something to you that, that, you, that you think is offensive, you stop the match and then you know, proceed with, 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 with the misconduct you wanted to get, provide for them, and then you restart as an indirect free kick. Yes, Joe. Yeah, sorry. Um, last spring, I noticed when we were coaching, there was there was like um, a few cases where a goalie was in the goal, a kid's in the goalie, right? For the first quarter, they come back out the next quarter and they're in the box. And then all of a sudden they're playing defense and they pick the ball up, forgetting that they're not goalie anymore. Um, is it, is that the, those teaching moments, the first couple of weeks, if you feel like you, you actually remembered who was in goal last. And if you remember the kid picked it up and not, and just forgot that they, are playing defense now not they can't use their hands i mean how does that work because i know last year there was a couple of weeks where they told us you know these kids will do this the first two weeks just use them as instruction as instructed opportunities i'm not sure how we you guys are we doing it now so you want to take that one more or me to take it because I mean, my answer would be it depends <laughs> that's what i was going to say too it depends yeah yeah well, Mara, you're muted. 
your enemy is the mute button tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, I keep doing that. Uh, I'm with you guys. I'm kind of 50-50 on that one, but definitely that that's kind of like a, a coaching reminder before the players go out, right? They remind your players that you're not the keeper anymore or whatever they need to do. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, maybe I'll let it go one time and it's just maybe do a drop ball. But after that, I'm going to start calling it. Okay. Thank you, more. I appreciate that. And, and when we say teaching moment, I, I think it's important. Part of the part of, 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 of a successful referee experience is, you know, keeping as parents and as coaches, you know, we want to be informed. So do the other ones, right? So if you're going to call a teaching moment, it, it, you know, what I would recommend is blow your whistle. So yeah. they know it's loud. So you know the south of the match, and then use your voice, which is your best tool, and say out loud, "Teaching moment," right? So you know, almost just with your hand, a teaching moment, just like you know, hey, game is stopped. Teaching moment. Walk over to the player, and explain to the player what happened. Okay, and if you want to talk to the coach, I mean, keep everybody engaged so that way they know what you're doing, what you're thinking. And again, I'm talking. I'm this. I'm talking for a 10U match, not a 14U yeah. match. There's no teaching moments in 14 years. So, you know, because, again, you're talking about an, an eight or nine-year-old or 10-year-old child who, you know, still very new to this and, you know, a lot of emotions in the first couple of weeks, you know. So let, let's let's be nice, you know, enforce of the law, but let, let's have some, some compassion and sympathy as we do that. So another question, Joe? That, that answered it. So basically, okay, if you feel like they're just accidentally picking it up, then it's a yeah. it's, it's, it's your judgment to decide if it's a teaching moment. It's early first week or two in the season, week yeah. or so in the season, and then that you just make sure that they know what's happening, so that the child and the team can understand that they got to tell exactly. the players and start not holding the ball after the when they're back in the field. So exactly, okay. make care. Okay, hey good. Joe, hey Joe, one reminder: make sure those teaching moments are briefed. It's not a big. Uh, I don't know, like a five minute uh oh, no. yeah. it's just a quick oh no i just tell the kids i just tell the kids i just tell the kids you were just goalie when you get the goal you can't play ball anymore Understood. that's all i tell you okay thanks mm -hmm. ken you got a question uh yeah I, basically the same thing that we just reiterated i guess i could have put my hand down was uh, i was i was going to throw out a suggestion um is that you know, sometimes that that can that can delay the game. You know, keep it brief, and then I I, I kind of as a general rule of thumb would go. I try to talk to the coach maybe during a quarter break. I see something the coach is not correcting it. Then I then I call the you know what I mean because I want to give the coach the opportunity to coach. You know, his team can make the corrections right. I mean, is that is it kind of what we think about it or you no? you you are absolutely correct. Uh, you can also use the the quarters or the half times to correct efficiencies in the first couple games. If it become an issue like throw-ins or anything like that, hey, coach, hey, you might want to talk to your players about as far as the proper way to do a throw-in because after a while it will become it will become a, an infractional foul. Well, then also it slows the game down because you're you're calling bad throw-ins all the game the whole game. Yeah, you know? That is correct. That is correct. You're absolutely right. Yep. Okay, so descent. We talked about next one. Number eight is prevents the keeper from releasing the ball in their hands. Um, Again, that that that's very rare when it happens. And all you can do is say, hey, player, back up, player, back up, back up, right? Just just kind of go that way. Um, nine, uh, this is deliberate kick to drive. You know, you're not going to see this much in tens and twelve, but this is they're, they're trying to skirt around some of the issues. Some some of the, for example, you can't you know, again, you can't pass the ball back to directly to the keeper. You can't do anything to trick that. You can head the ball, you can need the ball, but you can't sort of flip the ball up to yourself and then head it to the keeper. Again, it's not going to happen for us in, in nines and tens. I mean, at, at uh, tens and twelves. Um, in the last one, um, sort of the same as number seven, commits any other offense not mentioned in the laws of the game, which play a stop to caution the player. So if you have to caution, if you have to stop the match to caution the player, the restarts and break free kick. That's the same hand or a different hand, Joe? Okay, same hand, I think. Good. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the most common ones in 10U indirect free kicks are um, playing a dangerous manner, right? The high kick and uh, playing from the ground. Again, just the fact it's a high kick or on the ground does not make that an, 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 an offense. It make, as, long as, as, long as, as long as they're not doing it in a dangerous, in a dangerous way. Okay. Uh, now for a fun one offside. Um, do we have the section one offside videos on, on our website? The the build online? 
Uh, the build out line we do, it's it's in referee and also I believe in the volunteer portal. So okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it's it's in the coach and the referee portals. Both Perfect. Places. Okay. Good. For those who are coaches and those you know, so good, you know, coach referees go there. It's, it's a great animated PowerPoint, as it were, to um, to uh, to look at look at the build out line. But this is offside. So there, there are three things. Um, three components offside, right? Offside position, time of judgment, and active involvement. Three components, right? So offside position, you have to be in the opponent's half of the field. Simple. You have to be closer to the goal than the ball, and close to the and closer to the goal than the uh, second last defender. So as long as you're behind the ball and second last defender, you're in good shape on the opponent's half side of the field. That's the offside position, and you can be there all day as long as you don't get involved, right? Um, the time of judgment is when the ball is last touched or played by a thanks Jaime, good job by a um by by a teammate it's got to be touched or played by a teammate in the outside position and then the player must be actively involved um generally speaking 10u that's actually playing the ball actually being you know, actually touching the ball um you can interfere with an opponent if in your opinion as a referee the the player in the outside position even though they didn't touch the ball impacted how the defenders played the ball they got involved in play if they're standing in front of the keeper, preventing the keeper from seeing the play, even though they didn't touch it, they're actively involved in play in the interfere with the opponent. Okay. Or they gain an advantage from it. Uh, meaning if the ball hits off the goalpost, didn't touch anybody, and they're outside position when their ball was kicked, right? That that's uh, gaining an advantage from it. Very, very, very high level, but any questions? Okay. I think I went backwards. Okay. We have a couple of examples here. Some nice animated PowerPoints, right? Direction of attack is going uh, right to left. A is the attacking team. D is the defending team. So it looks like uh, A2 is off that position, right? Offside? I'll say yes. Right. Yes. They're both. Uh, they're both. Let me go back here. They're both. Uh, they're both side by side. Look at that AR. Perfect position. Good. Offside. No offside. Good. 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 Okay. A one's got the ball. Look at the A two and A three and D two. What do we do here? And answer, answer quietly to yourselves. And the answer is wait and see who touches it first. Because if, if A3 gets it, all good. So be slow to the flag and be slow to the whistle. Find out what happens here. <clears throat> right, A2, offside position. Didn't really impact play, wasn't really involved in play. So no offside, goal kick. D2's got the ball. Right? Did the red team, did the red team uh, last touch it or play it? The answer is no, because the defending team had it. Ooh. What do you think? It's the time the ball is last touched. The moment of the decision is the ball last touched, last, last touched or played. So A1's got the ball. A2 is outside position. And the moment of decision is when they when the A1 kicks the ball. So if that is indeed offside. Okay. And even if the restart, even if even if A2 got the ball on this side of the field, which is on their side of the field, because they start in outside position, no matter where they get it, it's outside of fence. So, yes, Steve. Just to point out, this will be a very controversial call 
for the sidelines because yeah. no one saw where A2 was when he started. they started their run. All they saw was A1 kick the ball. Yep. Stick to your guns. Um, we will, the referee staff will support you 100% on this call and uh, deal with any, anything that happened. Yeah, did you write, right, Steve? This, this, you know, the, set, the, the interesting thing is I, I call 10U the, the perfect, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, the perfect storm of well intended ignorance, right? We have parents for the first time playing with these rules. We have the kids first time playing with these rules and the laws. A lot of coaches first time. And the referees who've take, who, who took a, you know, a three a two or three hour online class and two hours of, of Mauro and Steve's brilliance on the field, right? With those five hours, they're now the most knowledgeable people on the field about the laws of the game. And um, not a lot of time, not a lot of knowledge, but you guys know, you know, you guys are the most informed ones out there. So this one is the correct call to make. Please have the courage to make it. And um, because it is the right call to make. Okay. A1 looks like offside position. There we go. See that exact same thing? Offside. They're not going to like you call offside on this, on this play here, but when they started the play, they're outside position. In that in that circumstance, Al, where is the assistant uh, referee position? On the goal line. Perfect. Offside line. Well, the, the assistant referee should be positioned right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, to determine that something, and then once and once they follow the ball to offside, they stand on the halfway line, which is as far as they go, raise their flag for offside, and at that point they can point with their flag to the, to the position. Right, and the referee, the referee will know that. Perfect. Not a very common call in ten or twelve use. No, it's not. In fourteens. Well, well, in 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 tens, you have the build out line. You have the build out line. But the same theory applies. Make the make this the build line to the halfway line. Same thing. They're they're yeah. past the build line. They come back before it. They're still outside position. Right. So this is the same concept, just a, just a different line in there. Correct. Okay. So this one here. Look at where A one is and where A two is. Okay, because A, you go back, because A2 was not, even though he was ahead of, he was ahead of A1, he's still, even with the, he was not ahead of the ball. And the ball was passed forward, so all good here. And this is where the referee really, really relies on the AR, which is why it's so important for the AR to be in proper position. If you're not in proper, there's no way you can see this. So this is why, and again, in a 10 and 12 view, easy to keep up with the play. 14s and old is a little tougher, but um, this is why being in position is, is so important. Okay. Any questions on offside? Good. Okay, drop ball. Um, and the jump ball is is a, is, is 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 an unusual re uh, restart, but basically, if you blow if you blow your whistle with, without having to caution somebody for any other reason, like for injury or you know dog in the field or a stray ball, anything like that, or you know again a six year old grandson was out to the field, um, you know, you restart the match with with, with a drop ball, okay, and it's usually at the player's waist or below, and it really is a drop ball. You stand that close, you drop it. You drop it to the ground. You don't roll it. It's not a bowling ball. You know, it's just not. You know, it's it's, it's a drop ball. Um, okay, um, and it's in play once it hits the ground. Okay, that that that's, that's one of the, that's one of the restarts or the restart that you as a referee actually put the ball in play. Um, if it was in a penalty area or less touch the penalty area, it's dropped to the to the goalkeeper. No matter what happened, if you stop for injury, the attacking team is about to score a goal, and they, you know whatever happened, and you stop, and you stop it for injury. The restart is to the to the, to the keeper. No ifs, ands, or buts for that to the play area. Otherwise, it's dropped to a single player from the team that last touched it, where the play where the play was stopped, where the ball was, and the play was stopped.
Okay. Players who are four and a half yards from the ball, that's their distance. And I like to think it's four and a half because they're in a meeting that can decide between four and five, they split the difference. But that's actually not happened. It's actually, it's actually four meters, which is four and a half yards. Okay. If the player kicks the ball before it's the ground, it wasn't put in play properly. Ball is never in play. You, read, you do the drop ball again. And a goal cannot be scored directly from a drop ball. It must touch another player first. So on a drop ball, the player can actually dribble the ball. They can punt, you know, they can kick the ball, dribble, whatever they're going to do, but they can't score directly from that. It's got to touch somebody else first. Any questions on drop balls? So in 10U, you, you'll stop it primarily for injury. And the restart is, again, the drop ball. Okay. Post game, um, we supervise the team handshakes. Not a lot of bad things happen to the handshakes, but you know, occasionally, right? Um, there's no rule anywhere that says keeper must come first. That's sort of a general accepted practice, but don't let that be a hilly die on. If the keeper doesn't come first, doesn't matter. There's no rule that says that. We do ask for for, for safety's sake is take the glove off. Not that I suspect anybody has something in their glove, but just it's good practice, you know, have open hand, open hand. Um, and then, you know, ask for feedback from, from, from your, your referee crew, you know, from, from the three of you. Did I miss anything? Did I miss a signal? Sort of the little, little, little mini, you know, post game afterwards. I kind of need to check in, make sure everything went, went okay as a team. Uh, you know, Jaime says, Al, oh, you missed my flag. Okay, you know, so we can talk about why I missed it or, whether, you know, you know and, and we discuss that, right? Uh, complete and sign the lineup card. So we are tracking, of course, we are tracking general practices. We track who scored the goals. We track put an X on a player who who's out that quarter. Um, we don't do we do we do we have uh, keeper regulations in ten U in fourteen sixty three or two two quarters per game? Uh, yes, for for ten U, okay. yes. Okay, so keep track of the keeper. Make sure there's you know, two. It is not your job as a referee to to enforce that. Merely mark it on the on the on, on the game card. You can't say number seven got out of the goal. It's got to be number three. That's not your job. Your job is to say, coach. Number seven, number seven played keeper for three quarters. Only it's a two two quarter rule in you know, in our region. Let the coach deal with it. And if he says ah whatever he gives you, you write that on the you write that on the back of the game card. This way you document the fact that you know that what they did. They just talk to coach about it. Um, Mark the goals, mark who they're out. If a player comes out for injury, it's not marked here. What I what I recommend you do, let's say, let's say uh, number five is, is out on, you know, number six is out on the second quarter and number five gets hurt. And you put number six in. I would circle number six to say they came in, and I would put an I on number five there saying they were injured. That way it's clear as to what happened when, you know, because that's the only communication the region really has with what happened in your game. Okay. Um, put down the information when they would, they would you know, time of the game, the date of the game, the field, some sort of conditions. You know, the important to know is, is, is we keep track of things over year, year over year. Um, rate, the, uh, rate the players and the, uh, the spectators and the, and the coaches, right? Um Make notes if you want to, especially for anything that's not normal, either excellent or poor, make a note. It's important for the region to know, you know, if the team has consistently poor behavior by the parents, we can deal with that, by, by only, but only if we know about it, right? What we don't want to hear later on is, oh, they've been that way all season. Well, tell us, <laughs> right? <laughs> Ahead of time. Uh, put your referees on there for your points and everything else, and then should there be a – a caution or should there be any like an injury anything that happens put that on the back of the game card this really is important for you know for, for the for the region to know okay and then as we get i think Jaime already did this but this is the video for the bill outline it is an eight minute video it's fantastic and interest, interestingly enough the the gentleman who's who's take, you know, took over as my in my role as instructor for section one uh, section one director of instructor is a guy who, who broadcast this Tony Robinson he's got a nice South African accent. <clears throat> and at uh, six fifty nine, I'm going to say any questions. Wow, no questions. Yeah. 
Wow. Either we did a great job or like, ah, forget it. Oh, oh thank you, John. Thank you, John. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I have 658. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. You got two minutes. This is going all the way back to, to uh, U8. And okay. Teams that tend to have kids that want to be in the goal. Right. What's the uh, what, what's the job of the referee to, to to keep that from happening or keep it fair? So my recommendation to you as a referee is just kind of like try to tell the kids to come off the uh, the, the the goal and also let the coach know and we're at a break or just you know a little quick pass by a coach. Let me advise you: there's no keepers on this on this age group. Get away from the goal guarding because a lot of playing hockey, they just stay there. They don't want to move. Right. So you as a referee can just let the kids know oh, you need to move away and also let the coach know so there'll be a coaching moment too. And then they can correct that, that, that issue. Okay. Good. No questions. Yeah. Any other questions, everybody? Oh, we got sure. one, Joe. Hey, um, I noticed when I was AR in last season and before that, um, you all get a tendency where you have families that are just on top. The you, don't, you can't go up and down your half of the field. Um, how do you address that uh, without getting hit by you know umbrellas and stuff? I know the parents want to get close to the field, see their kids, but it's kind of hard to you know get down that sideline sometimes. But that that would be one of those things that you would do as a system referee, do you uh, pre walkthrough of the field? If there's any uh, obstructions that's gonna impede you from moving from on the on the, uh, on the goal line, I mean on the uh, touch line, you can correct that. And also, if somebody comes in in the middle of the game, just let the coach know I need you to move, or you can tell them to move. Yeah, and, and by the way, one of the easiest ways of doing it, Joe, is just you know say hi to everybody, be super yeah. friendly, and be like, hey guys, I need a favor. Can you guys do me a favor and back up just a little bit? Yeah. And and I promise you, like ninety nine percent of the time, they'll be like, oh, we're so sorry, no problem, and they'll back up. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. Yeah. No yeah. I mean, I, I say things like, I know you pay for premium seats, but can you please give me a favor and you know, I'll give you a full refund. Just back up another couple of feet and you know, try to engage a little bit of humor, you know, and that, yep. that generally works. If it doesn't go to the coach and if, it, if that doesn't work, you know, I mean, again, at that point, the, the first one should always work because the parents, again, especially do it early and you do it in, in a friendly manner, yep. right? Again, not, not a, yeah. I'm the referee, get out of my way kind of thing. Cause that confrontational it's friendly. You know, do me a favor, back up a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Any, any other questions, everybody? Well, we get paid OT, right, Heidi? Yeah, I guess so. We're already two yeah. minutes OT. I have yeah. a question because right. I missed I'm I missed part of the beginning. Are you, you guys gonna have that was the best I, part? That was the best part. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Time expires. Sorry. I was in another meeting. Sorry. Um, are you guys gonna post this? You're not? Okay. No, not one sure. and done. Sorry. Yes, yeah. It will be, it will be <laughs> on the website, Leanne. I'm going gonna, gonna to do a little editing, but it will be on like, probably like around 10 o'clock tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I was in another meeting. That's okay. Good. We all have other lives, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes right. they come first, occasionally. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Just for the uh, returning referees, uh, just as far as equipment, if you have any, any missing items for your uniform, Please let us know before opening day if you have to referee a match. Uh, do not substitute with other items that are not was given to you. You know, here at 1463, we are very uniform and very professional. So please yes, let sir. us know ahead of time that you're missing some items so we can give it to you. So when you step on the pitch, you look very professional.
additionally to a scheduling i think uh i think we're working on the uh core schedule so if you don't have a cgi account i think steve can cover that too uh you should get a cgi account uh and if you already have a cgi account uh jim will let you know when will be the time to start signing up as far as picking games uh hopefully shortly we can start informing you as far as getting this game going because uh opening days right around the corner yeah not a whole lot of time so on on that note more thank you for that so so yeah the schedule is actually being worked on as we speak uh, I am pushing our scheduler or asking our scheduler to get it done as quickly as possible. Of course, just like Al mentioned, like life gets in the way sometimes. Um, he is he is planning on getting it done by end of night, tomorrow night, Friday. Uh, I'm going to do my checks. And then once that's all good to go, I send it over tomorrow. I send it over to Steve and they're responsible for getting all that stuff up on our CGI platform. If you're brand new referees and you're wondering what CGI is, it is our system that we use to assign referees or to, your, to assign yourselves, right? So, and, and Steve, again, could uh, break that down for you guys. So anyway, except for me. And this is a great system, too, because you get notifications after you signed up that you got games coming up. So you will never forget. But in that case, just talking about scheduling, if we don't get a chance later on, if you have a game, if any reason, any emergency comes up, please let us know ahead of time so we can substitute, uh, put somebody else on your spot. Uh, don't just assume that hey, you didn't show up. And we'll, it's, just, it's very difficult to try to fill games. And here at 1463, we do our best to make sure that we don't have no, uh, any non-referees doing uh, any matches. So uh, please let us know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, we, good, good. You know, again, coming from the different region, we a very, very strong program, a lot of pride in the referee program, good mentoring, uniforms are always tip top. No, it's a, um, we're proud of our referee program. Perfect. Any last words, Mauro or Steve? Or? Uh, from my side, is uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to, uh, uh, joining us today, I highly appreciate your time. You know, I know we got a lot of stuff to do. We had had to work today, but thank you very much. And then, uh, looking forward for opening day. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to email, text, whatever you need to do before op opening day. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Yep. Absolutely, and a a big round of, of applause for Al. Thank you so no, much, please. Al, for putting this together. You, you My pleasure. No, 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 you. no. Man, it's all you guys, man. It's Morrow's Morrow saying, you know, he's the leadership of Morrow. <laughs> I, I follow the I follow the RRA. Perfect. All right, Mauro, are we good to go to allow everybody to get back oh. to their lives? Chris, oh, I got a question. Got a Krista. question. Krista, Krista doesn't want us to go. Let's no, go. no, wait. I do have a quick question. Um, for offside and like deflections, like if it deflected off of a defender. If, in your opinion, the defender didn't 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 control it or didn't have a chance to control it. Uh, it yeah, is like let's say it just okay. Let's say it just like hit the defender yeah. real quick. They didn't have a chance to maintain no. control. It, okay, last, but if they last, did, yeah, if they did, if they did, no offside. If they, if in your opinion they did, it was a deflection, offside, because it was, it was okay. last played by last played by a teammate. Okay, okay, perfect. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Yeah, bye. Right. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. See you later. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody.